local 4 news begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is happening in Flint right now where Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette just announced six more criminal charges in connection with the Flint water crisis. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Those six state employees are being charged with felonies for allegedly covering up the truth over Flint's tainted water. Lauren Padel joins us now live in the newsroom and Lauren Attorney General Bill Schuette promised back in April that there was going to be more criminal charges and he delivered on that promise today. Any big names? Well, names we may not recognize right off the bat, but we're talking about big titles. Employees from the MDEQ that go to, let's see, Chief of Drinking Water and Municipal Assistance. So so pretty big people involved in this Flint water crisis. So let's go back to April. Two state regulators and a city employee were charged then for their roles in the Flint water crisis. Today, the AG just announcing that six state employees will now face a total of 18 criminal charges. Let's break all of this down for you. We're talking about three employees from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. They have been charged. We're talking about Corinne Miller, who has since left the department, along with Nancy Peeler and Robert Scott, who are still employed. Also, three employees from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality have also been charged. Their names, Adam Rosenthal, Patrick Cook, and Leanne Schechter-Smith. That's the former chief of drinking water and municipal assistance for the MDEQ. Now, Shooty, just wrapping up this press conference minutes ago and explaining why these specific people have now been criminally charged. Take a listen. There's an overall theme and repeated pattern. Each of these individuals attempted to bury or cover up, to downplay or to hide information that contradicted their own narrative, their story. And their narrative and their story was there's nothing wrong with Flint water and that it was perfectly safe to use. In essence, these individuals concealed the truth. You can see a lot of passion there delivered by the AG. Now, Shooty went on to say that their action, these six state employees, they put the children of Flint in the crosshairs of drinking poison. Now, the charges of these six state employees range from misconduct in office, willful neglect of duty, tampering with evidence and conspiracy. Rhonda, today's announcement really brings the total number of people charged in the Flint water crisis to nine. But here's the kicker. The AG says over 200 people have been questioned and we can even we can expect even more charges down the road. So a big mm. announcement today coming from Flint and we'll certainly have follow ups throughout the day. Back to you. Rhonda. All right, Lauren, thank you. In fact, we have local Ford defender Kevin Deeds. He's going to have much more on the state workers who were charged. We'll have that coming up for you on local four news starting at four o'clock today. Meantime, a judge will not disqualify the Wayne County prosecutor's office from a sex crimes case involving former Michigan State basketball star and NBA star Mateen Cleaves. Judge Kathy Dowd announced that her decision she announced it in court today. Cleaves attorneys wanted to disqualify the prosecutor's office due to a conflict of interest with the victim. Despite the decision, Judge Dowd has requested affidavits from Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy and could change her mind if new information surfaces. Detroit police are investigating after a man was shot to death on the city's west side. It happened last night. Police found the body of the 38 year old man lying on the sidewalk near the intersection of Norfolk and Cherry Lawn streets. This is right near eight mile. Right now they have no descriptions of the gunman. If you saw anything in the area, think you could help out police. You should give them a call right away. Three people are recovering after a driver. Actually, it was a drive by shooting on the city's east side, and it happened in the 1800 block of Algonac, right near Outer Drive and Seven Mile. Police say that at least one person in a silver SUV drove up to a house and started shooting. We're told that the victims are all in stable condition. Police have not released their names. Switching gears, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Had some scattered showers around the area earlier today, and right now they're mainly located to our west. we got a couple farther to the north in parts of uh, northern Lapeer County, but you can see right here out toward Coldwater and out toward Marshall, got some pretty good thunderstorms that are erupting. The areas of red, that's where there's heavier rain, but they're all basically just sitting in place. Some light rain may be drifting over portions of uh, western Lenawee and western Washtenaw counties at this hour, but most areas remain dry. It's it's already 83 degrees and we'll stay in the low 80s and make it into the mid 80s later today. 
but we're now in the woods in terms of rain. There is a chance of a scattered shower or thunderstorm later on today for the ride home, but it's not going to be a wash out by any means. We're looking at 78 right now for our friends in Pontiac, 79 over in Mount Clemens. Good afternoon, Sandusky. You've got 71 degrees. As you can see, we have a, basically have a boundary right on top of us to our north where it's cloudier. That's where we have temperatures in the low 70s, while to the south, it's a lot warmer. Temperatures around 81 degrees for our friends in Monroe right now. So count on temperatures to stay right about where they are or a little bit higher with on and off rain later this afternoon. Got your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Andrew, thank you. Hillary Clinton making history last night as she became the first woman to lead a major political party in the United States. And now Clinton and her running mate Tim Kaine are back on the campaign mode with more events planned in Philadelphia. NBC's Chris Pallone has the story. Thursday night, Hillary Clinton walked onto a stage in Philadelphia and into history. I accept your nomination. becoming the first woman ever nominated for president by a major political party, laying out her vision of America. America is great because America is good. And a progressive agenda shaped in part by your tough battle to defeat Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders and I will work together to make college tuition free for the middle class and debt free for all. Clinton offering a brutal takedown of Republican nominee Donald Trump. He wants to divide us from the rest of the world and from each other. Calling him unfit for the Oval Office. A man you can bait with a tweet is not a man we can trust with nuclear weapons. Trump responded as he often does in a series of tweets. Clinton and her pick for VP Tim Kaine now hit the ground hard trying to lock up support in swing states which hold the key to the White House. Chris Pallone, Local 4 at what has transpired over the last two weeks. Watch and we want to thank everyone who came out this morning at Campus Marshes Park in downtown Detroit. We had our Clinton conversation event where we recap Clinton's speech and also really talked about some big takeaways from the Democratic National Convention and just some general thoughts about the election and where we are in the United States right now. We had all walks of life, all ages, races. It was wonderful discussion this morning. We thank everyone for coming out. And you can actually see more of it right now at clickondetroit.com. See some of the insight and perspective Detroiters have on the politics page of clickondetroit.com. And we have a highway closure that you're going to want to know about before you make your weekend plans. Starting tonight at 9 p.m., all eastbound lanes of 696 again is going to be closed between I-275 and the M5, uh, well, the I-275, 96, M5 interchange all the way to Telegraph Road. This is for maintenance work. It's all the way through Farmington Hills. The lanes will reopen on Monday morning around 5 a.m. So it's a pretty big inconvenience for your weekend travels. Again, it's on the eastbound side only, and it will be open in time for your Monday morning rush hour. Still ahead, new information about Zika cases right here in the United States and why one state is now warning residents about contracting the disease even without traveling outside of the country. A beloved pet is shot more than a dozen times in Florida, what the family is doing to help catch the person responsible. But first, a police officer in California shot and killed during a traffic stop while another officer was badly injured. We'll have more on that when we come right back. And we continue to follow the breaking news regarding the Flint water crisis and Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette has just charged six state workers in connection to the water crisis there in Flint. Three of the employees charged are with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, while the other three are with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. We're going to have much more on their alleged roles in the crisis coming up on Local 4 News first at 4. 38 brand new citizens from more than two dozen countries step into the United States history at a very, very interesting time to come into citizenship as an immigrant. We talked to them today at four and first at four. If you're in a bad 
Welcome back, everyone. A shooting in San Diego leaves one police officer dead and another in surgery. This happened late last night as the two officers were shot while conducting a traffic stop in a neighborhood there in San Diego. The officers called for backup immediately, and one suspect who was also shot is now in custody. The names of the officers have not yet been released, although the department announced the officer is in surgery and is expected to survive. Police are now trying to determine if anyone else may have been involved. In good health today, the governor of Florida confirmed the state could have the first cases of the Zika virus transmitted by mosquitoes locally. Governor Rick Scott said that today four mysterious Zika infections likely came from mosquitoes in the Miami area. More than 1600 Zika infections have been reported in the United States, but the four patients in Florida would be the first not linked to travel outside of the United States. A dog in Florida is going to survive, believe it or not, after being shot by a BB gun 26 times. Noelle Perez was heartbroken when she came home from work to find her dog Lola with over two dozen BB pellets lodged in her skin. They took her to the vet where most of the pellets were taken out, but the family is still shaken up that this could even happen. She is an innocent animal. Um, there's nothing she did to deserve this. Violated, um, scared. Um, that anybody could get to her, that anybody could be on my property. Luckily, it looks like the person responsible may not get away with this. Police are currently looking through social media posts that they believe may give away the suspect's identity. More Americans than ever before are not taking a vacation this summer. Coming up, how it's hurting the economy, actually. And Andrew, with temperatures this warm, I guess we don't need to leave. Oh, you said it. we got some of the best weather right here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan. Come on, everybody, especially if you're watching online anywhere in the world. Detroit's a fine place. Partly sunny skies right now. A few showers that are around. Will they affect us later on today? What about the weekend? Got your weekend forecast and your seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. One family, three athletes, all Rio bound. We're all trying to uh, achieve this Olympic dream at the same time. <laughs> They call themselves an unstoppable team. A husband, wife, and sister, all hurdlers, and two of them are racing against each other. It's all love and it's friendly competition. Just being able to be with them is just a great feeling. I'm Kimberly Gill. Meet the Metro Detroit family helping each other see their Olympic dreams come true. That's tonight at 11. Summer. Welcome back, everybody. For those that have big plans this weekend that include outdoor activities. You want to hear from Andrew right now? Yeah, and they're looking pretty good this afternoon, Rhonda. I mean, late this afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock, we might get some pop-up showers or storms. Mm -hmm. But it's no washout, and not everyone gets one. So that's some good news. That is good news. And take a look at this. More good news on 4 Live Radar. Now, I know we do need the rain, but right now it's appearing elsewhere. A lot of you might have plans at this hour. We've got a couple of showers here. Northern tip of Lapeer County. You can see that north of North Branch into areas like a extreme western uh, Sanilac County at this hour. But that's minor. That's just some light rain. Where the heavier stuff is, is still well off to our west around Coldwater, also just to the west of Hillsdale County. We've had these showers and thunderstorms pop up and stay in those areas for quite a while, for at least two, three hours since earlier this morning. So if you are traveling this far west and along I-69 from Marshall to Coldwater, watch out for some high standing water in those areas because it has been raining there for quite a while. But nothing much here in southeast Michigan yet. We've got 83 degrees. You're looking live at downtown Detroit. Beautiful sunshine overhead, a calm wind, a little humid out there. I mean, it is a little sticky. Heat index right now a little bit higher than the actual temperature at 84, and it will still be warm for the Tigers game later this evening. If you're coming downtown, yeah, come one, come all. It looks like it's going to be good weather over at the ballpark. I did put in a chance of scattered showers, but they'll be so scattered. If they do affect the baseball game, I think it'll be for a very short time. This game is scheduled to start at 7:10. Plan for an on-time start because these showers that pop up, they'll pop up randomly across the entire area. Hard to pin down geographically where they'll actually be. So some may occur in Detroit, same, some may not. And if they do, they'll fade away pretty quickly. So we're looking at scattered showers this evening as well, but then clearer skies overnight. Temps in the 80s for the most part, 84 for our friends over in uh, Ferndale, but 70s farther north along the I-69 corridor and northward. That's where we're seeing middle and low 70s right now, and a little more comfortable. With the help of these northwest, northwest, northeasterly winds, I think areas in the thumb from Sandusky down to Capac, Port Huron, Lapeer, I think you mostly stay in the 70s for the rest of the day. 
south of I-69, south of Hall Road, including Detroit, down to the Ohio border, you'll generally see temperatures stay right about where they are low and middle 80s as we go through this afternoon. So plan on warmer conditions. There's that strip of uh, showers that trail off pack back toward uh, parts of Wisconsin, also parts of Iowa. It's all along the frontal boundary, just north of it. That's going to hang around as we go through the rest of the day, even into tomorrow. So this evening we might see a few showers and thunderstorms pop up, pop up once again, but they fade away at night and then we'll look at them reemerge tomorrow afternoon. You can see them blossom here once again around 3, 4 in the afternoon. And I'll be with you all weekend long to help track them. So to round things out, for this afternoon, count on a few on and off showers. Nothing between now and say 2 o'clock, so if you're going outside, that's fine. But if you plan to be outdoors 2 p.m. and afterward, and for the ride home, you'll be dodging a few raindrops. Temperatures up to around 85 degrees. Again, it's 83 right now. A few showers and storms still scattered about as we go through your evening hours. Temperatures down to 66, 67 degrees overnight. Sunset is at 855. Again, Tiger's game, I think, is looking good. Then as we go into tomorrow, more showers and thunderstorms pop up in the afternoon again. With the clouds around, mixing with sun, we'll see temperatures around 80 degrees. If you want more sunshine, higher temperatures, I've got just the thing. Look at Sunday, mostly sunny skies, a high of 84. Then it gets hotter next week, highs near 90 by the middle of next week. Rhonda? All right, thank you, Andrew. And Americans aren't cashing in on their vacation time as much as they used to, apparently. There's a study that was done by Project Time Off, and it shows that 55% of Americans left vacation days unused at the end of the year last year. The study says that people don't use vacation time because they either don't want to return to a lot of work or don't want to be seen as replaceable. But vacations are important and even help stimulate the economy. and just simply give you a break from work. You should take it. We have a Help Me Hank consumer alert. It's about a burn hazard that has led to a new recall. It includes more than 375,000 oven mitts. The recall involves the Marvel Thanos Infinity Gauntlet oven mitts. They're sold exclusively at LootCrate.com, and apparently the oven mitts lack thermal protection, which is quite important. The recall comes after Loot Crate has received 241 reports of burn injuries. Consumers should stop using the product and contact Contact Loot Crate for a replacement. Want to go see the Sundance Film Festival? Well, Local 4 is calling on filmmakers for your chance to win a trip to Sundance. All you have to do is send us a 5 to 15 minute video fitting the theme opposites track. It can be action, comedy, drama, really doesn't matter. Just be creative and you have until September 21st to enter to win. Head to FilmChallengeDetroit.com for more. Still ahead, a man, a disabled man, creates a very special karate class of next, how this unique form of self-defense has changed his life and the wake-up call that inspired him to get in shape. Wow. Welcome back, everybody, and we have an inspiring story to end our newscast on. It's out of Cleveland, and it's about a disabled man defying the odds. Oh, it certainly is, Rhonda. Paul Brailler has been in a wheelchair since birth, but after seeing a few of his close friends pass away from poor health, he decided to get active. Yes, he did. He says that he fell in love with karate and now has actually created a unique type of karate specifically for disabled people called Cryptido. All right. I'm healthier than I was seven years ago. I have more confidence than I was seven years ago. And that's what Cryptido, that's what the art of karate is. Brailler says that his ultimate goal is to help build the self-esteem of others and show that nothing is impossible. Ah, certainly inspiring. And with that in mind, he's now reaching out to other karate schools across the country, hoping that he can teach other so-called disabled people. They, too, can do whatever they can. That is amazing. I've taken karate classes before and it truly it, it is very empowering mm -hmm. and anyone can do it. I mean, we've seen kids with cancer do karate to disabled people, so it's and really nice. Mr. Brailler taking it and uh, <laughs> going a long way with it. Yeah, he is. Enjoy the day, everybody. Local